Let's talk about conjugate zeros theorem and two Alex homework topics that has to do with this conjugate zeros theorem. Suppose that p of x has real coefficients, then the conjugate zeros theorem says that non-real zeros, I'm going to highlight this part, non-real zeros occur only in conjugate pairs. What that means is, for example, if x equals 5 plus 2i is a 0, then x equals 5 minus 2i must be 0. They never come um, by itself. It always comes in with its pair. Okay? So in class, we talked about how to write conjugates. You just switch the sign of the imaginary term only. Okay? So anytime you have a term that has i, okay, like you have 2i, then you switch it to negative 2i. If you had minus 7i, you switch it to plus 7i. If you have positive 10i, you switch it to negative 10i, but you only switch the sign of the imaginary term, okay? So um, if you can write conjugate pairs, if one of them is a real zero of that polynomial, its pair must be a zero too, okay? So using that conjugate zeros theorem, that imaginary zeros always come in pairs, I want to talk about how we can solve this one um, using a little shortcut. Okay, now listen. There is a long way of doing this, okay? A uh, pretty algebra heavier way of doing this, but I want to talk about what we just said to kind of think of a shortcut, okay, to think about. Um, all right, let's see. Using the conjugate zeros theorem, which stated that non-real zeros always come in, that's my wording, pairs. Okay? So they're always with its partner. Okay? It's never going to come by itself. Okay? It says find all zeros of p of x, that is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x plus 10. Remember, we said we look at the degree of the polynomial to determine how many real zeros we're going to have. What's the biggest exponent in this polynomial? 3, right? So since degree is 0, degree equals 0 tells us that p of x has 3 zeros. Okay, it has three zeros in total. Look, they gave us that three plus i is a zero. Okay, so they're giving us one of the zero, but are they really giving us one of the zero? No, not really, right? If x equals three plus i is a zero, notice that it's not a real number. Okay, this is an imaginary number. So, its conjugate pair must be a zero. Three minus i must be a zero because these two are conjugate pairs. Look at how many answers we got so far. We have one answer that was given to us in the problem. They gave us this, right? The second one we found out using the conjugate zeros theorem. Okay? Now, Remember, we have three zeros of this polynomial. We found two answers so far. So how many answers is left? One, right? Because we need to find three. Now think about this for me. Can this last one be an imaginary zero? Um, imaginary zeros always come in pairs. So if this last guest is an imaginary guest, we need to have a room for its partner. But can we afford another zero for this polynomial whose degree is only three? Nope. So this tells me that, oh, guess what? This has to be a real zero. This gotta be a real zero because it can't be an imaginary zero. Because to be an imaginary zero, we need to have a room for its conjugate partner, right? But we're only allowed to have three zeros in total. 
not the fourth one. So I can't have an imaginary zero. This got to be real zero. So if it's real, guess where we can find it? I'm going to graph this. Because if it's a real zero, we should be able to see it. Desmos graphing. Oh, not scientific. Desmos graphing. If it's a real zero, we should be able to find it right on that x axis. x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x plus 10. Look at this function for me. It's a cubic function. It only has one x intercept, but ta da, we have an x intercept at negative 1. And x intercepts are aka 0. So guess what? We found our third answer. So there is a long way of doing this. Um, and Alex does a wonderful job explaining it. It really does. But I would rather just use my, our knowledge about conjugate zeros theorem and a help of a calculator to figure out that last real zero on this topic. So that's how you would do the topic called using the conjugate zeros theorem, because we actually used it, right? to find all zeros of a polynomial.